there's another realm, not just the what happens to our sense of selfness, another realm of what does society do with this? What does society do as we get more and more of these terms and we understand more and more where the gears are, where the controls are, where the challenges are to the sense of autonomy and agency in people, what's going to happen at that point? What's clear is, if you are poor or poorly connected, you are screwed. Because as more and more of these labels are given out, that's just the excuse that's needed to deny you a job or health care or fair housing. That is clearly an enormous danger with knowledge with this. But hopefully what happens instead in a more optimistic note is somewhere in all these continua that this class was about, you see there but for the grace of God and a couple of neurotransmitters and three or four more receptors could go I as you begin to see a continua, as you begin to see all sorts of realms that are tragically done in biology. We have no trouble looking at a schizophrenic and seeing this is a disease and this is someone who needs our care and forgiveness and protection and we are in a world now where people who obsessively count numbers eight hours a day we will have to be able to view that as just as much a disease that is just as much deserving of care and protection and understanding with any luck what all this knowledge is going to do is force us to extend an umbrella of protection a realm of empathy into areas we could never have dreamt of before but never have dreamt of to the same exact extent that if you took the wisest, most compassionate, most introspective person on earth from 500 years ago and told them epilepsy is a disease, it would have made no sense at all. And we are certainly sitting here with a whole world of things where it could make no sense to us at all, where we will come to see that it has biological components as strongly as any of these others, and we will have this challenge of seeing that this is a realm, not of judgment, but of protection. And when we reach that point, we will have discovered that when we describe somebody as being healthy, when we say we are healthy, what we're really saying is we merely have the same diseases that everybody else does. And with any luck, out of this will come a great deal of compassion. Okay, so that's where all of this may play out in terms of the challenge to people's sense of individuality, what society should do with knowledge like this as it emerges. What's probably most important is what all this stuff means in terms of impacting you and your interactions in society and what you will wind up doing. One of the totally irritating themes, probably the most irritating concept in this whole course, is the one of modulation, these stupid if-then clauses, because what they say over and over and over again is just when you think you figured out what is causing behavior, oh no, it's not actually causing it, it is amplifying a pre-existing tendency of this, or damping, or modulating, or imposing a contingent clause, or doesn't anything cause anything, is like the entire point of this class that nothing ever Never actually starts a behavior. Everything is modulating everything, so you could never figure out how stuff is actually working. Why does this have to be so complicated? And one thing that comes out of the why does this have to be so complicated is why does it have to be so difficult to do something helpful then in any of these realms? And I know for a fact that a large majority of you have the desire to do that, figuring in some of the things you want to do with the rest of your life. And what is really easy is to come out of a course like this saying it's really impossible to change anything because it is so incredibly complicated. <coughs> It is really hard to do it because of how complicated it is, but it's not impossible. It's really hard to do it because it will require not only doing vast amounts of work of collecting vast amounts of information, but then trying to synthesize it and trying to intuit when you should stop paying attention to the vast amounts of information. It is doable, but it will be incredibly hard because down the line, every time one of you guys will choose to try to do something with a level of excellence that comes to people here very easily, every time you choose to do something, you are de facto saying no to 20 other things, and some of those other things will be very, very important things to you, and those are tough choices to make. And it will be doable but hard because something that's probably utterly inconceivable to you guys, but which is at some point you're going to get tired 
and it gets a lot harder to try to turn all of this into how can you make things better. But you guys need to do that. Here's a story, and this was about my father. My father was an architect, and an architectural historian, and part of his career he taught in NYU, but McCarthy era, things didn't work out, and he wound up teaching in this crappy little architectural night school in Brooklyn for years and years on end. And this was as flea-bitten of a place as you can possibly get. And every now and then I would go to see a lecture of his, and he was a spectacular lecturer. And he would do this thing. One of the lectures, he's in there, and he's putting up pictures of like the most beautiful, important buildings on Earth, and Versailles, and the pyramids of Giza, and this or that incredible palace, and all of that. And so, and here's these guys sitting in this night school who are like working as drafts during the day and this really ragtag bunch and putting up these pictures of like the most beautiful arc and you know exactly what it is to inspire these people to move to the grid and no that's not what he's doing he's putting up these pictures and he's yelling at these people saying for too long architects have been whores of the wealthy what they do is we build their palaces we build their mausoleums we build their forts and there's Versailles and there's the Giza and all and we and I do not want to see you be being the whores of the wealthy and the whores of the powerful you are to, And he's yelling at them. He's yelling at them about this. And these are folks who they're going to be lucky if they do like illegal garage extensions in Canarsie in Brooklyn someday. And he's yelling at them about this. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And it took some time to realize that, no, in fact, this was not at all stupid. And in fact, this was something remarkably respectful he was doing because he was saying to them, you have the capacity to sin. You have the capacity to do wrong. And implicit in granting the power to people like that, it also intrinsic in that is, thus you have the capacity to attain a state of grace through the work that you will do. Great other story. Robert Oppenheimer, when the first atomic bomb was tested and went off, made an amazing statement, which is, even now, now even physics knows sin. And the statement there being that even something as abstract as physics can, on some metaphorical, some secular level, know sin. Even within the realm of putting together buildings, if you do a toadying for the wrong people, this could count as a state of sinning, and intrinsic in that is the possibility of a state of grace, even in worlds like being a physicist or being an architect. It's not hard to see that one for you guys, though, because of who you all are. All of you here are privileged. You are powerful. You will have powerful resources and connections your entire life, and it will constantly intersect with the last 10 weeks. And it's guaranteed that some of you at various points will have 30 seconds to decide with somebody in an ER who has taken a vast amount of pills to try to kill themselves. You need to decide, is it them? Is it their disease? Is there even a boundary? Do I give the command against their will to have their stomach pumped? Every one of you at some point will make decisions about quality of life if you go into medical professions as to when you pull a plug. Almost certainly some of you in here will be judges someplace or other wrestling with some of the exact <coughs> issues brought up. Some of you in here will be legislators deciding how money should be spent, what things money is a waste on, and you guys will be in positions like that because if anybody will wind up with those powers, it will be you guys. And if you remember any of this stuff, what will seem the easiest thing to remember is it's so complicated it is impossible to fix anything. It is impossible to make things better. And so I want to f finish the class with two final thoughts here. One is, even though it's complicated, you got to do something. Wonderful, cool thing I heard about in archaeology, and I don't know if this is really true or urban legend, but when you excavate a site, what you're supposed to do is excavate only about half of it. 
You leave the other half for the people in the future with better techniques and better understanding and leave something intact there to keep from your sort of blundering hands. And the next person who then excavates does only half and half at every juncture saying, leave the possibility that people will be thinking very differently in the future. Work with the possibility that some of the things we feel certain about right now, the smartest and most compassionate of people 500 years ago felt that way about epilepsy or things of that sort. It's complicated just because it's complicated. That's not an excuse to do nothing. If anybody is going to do it and make a difference, it will be you guys. The other final point is to do in one last dichotomy, one last artificial bucket, one that runs through this business way too often. You don't have to choose between being compassionate and being scientific. So go and do both. And good luck. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.